One of the hardest things that that we do as artists is uh, is uh, take ourselves down, and we're really good at it. And sometimes it doesn't help to have a muse like you, one that is constantly hammering me with ideas, and I mean that's a you know <laughs> first world problem, but. Not really a first world problem. It's a, a sounds like humble bragging, I know, but it's not. It is. It's not. I. I don't know what I'm saying right now. I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm verklempt, I guess it were. Uh, it's so easy as an artist to um, implode. To self-destruct. It's that old imposter syndrome, which I've talked about before. And sometimes that comes about not because of 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 a uh, of you as an artist questioning your abilities and your skills, but sometimes it's external forces that you can't control. Or you, you seems like you can't control, and no matter how powerful and profound a relationship you have with your muse, there are things out there that seem to every day want to take you down as an artist, and we let them. We, we measure our work in two different ways. We measure our work through the lens of an artist and through the lens of a business. And sometimes those two lenses don't get in sync with one another. And you can look at your work. You can have others look at your work and your work stands out. And you can read your sentences and you can think, yeah, I did that. I did that. Yeah, that's me. It's all me. And you could and should be proud of that work. And you step back. As every artist does. And you look at that work through the lens of business, commerce. And you compare that work with the ability your ability to pay the bills and sometimes sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it's crushing and it's those crushing times where I have to stop myself and I have to remind me and my muse that Herr Mozart died a pauper. The greatest composer in the history of our planet died a pauper. It's a sad, sad, sad situation where entire communities and countries have little to no respect for the art, arts, all of them. And surely you've got to feel that muse. I know you talk to all the other muses out there. You gossip about, oh, my artist, wine, wine, wine. So you know, you know that 
we're all struggling. And it's okay. Because that which not kills, that which does not kill us only makes us stronger. And as an artist, sometimes you have to look at it as if that which does not kill us only makes us hungrier. Literally and metaphorically, of course. And yet we continue on. What does that say about us as artists, as artists and muses? What does that say? Does that say we have this strange sadomasochistic relationship going on wherein you like to continually inundate me with these ideas and I continue to allow it and then I translate those ideas into the written word and wonder, wonder what's going to happen with them. But hey, this isn't about self-pity. Artists in general tend to get very reflective. We turn inward a lot. We hold the mirror up to ourselves and we look into our eyes and we question. And that is good. Asking those questions, challenging ourselves, that is how we grow. And if we spend our time, too much time, looking through that lens of business and trying to figure out how we can play the game or game the system, we are neglecting the truest lens. And that is the lens of art by which we see the world because every artist sees the world differently. We look at the landscape of existence through child-wide eyes as if everything could fill us with wonder and hope and despair and love all at once. Every one of the emotions it's like this gigantic funnel, right? And we step outside with our big funnel open and the world just dumps all this stuff into it and then it filters down into us and we do with it what we need. Do with it what we shall. And sometimes, with that big funnel open, some bad things get through. And we deal with them. And we reconfigure them, rewrite them, retheme them, refeel them until they match our needs, they meet our needs. I guess today is one of those days where I'm feeling a little reflective little introspective. I'm sure I can come up with more ifs. Ifs and isms. Don't ifs and isms make the world go round? I'm just looking at words right now. Muse. And the words transpose themselves and rearrange themselves and dance upon the page. In, a, in an attempt to make me not understand what I'm saying or what I'm feeling. And yet, there they are. And here I am. And there you are. And we got this thing going and we're not going to stop ever. No matter what the world does to us, we are not going to stop. Why? Because we can't. 
Because if you and I don't do this, if you and I don't dance this dance, then I'm not alive. And that's the truth. I'm an artist. I have been since I was a little kid. I have felt it deep within my heart and soul and knew at a young age that it was going to be a rough journey, but one that I wouldn't trade for anything. Sometimes it hurts to feel things so deeply. But it's how I exist. It's who I am. The good thing is, is 99% of the time I'm in control of it all. And I do it without even have to be medic without having to be medicated. Probably because of you. <laughs> Probably because of the words I write. Because sometimes writing is therapeutic. And it gets me through. And when it doesn't, I get on my bicycle and I ride. And while I'm on my bicycle, you tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, I have this great idea. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm on a bike. I can't write anything down. Why are you giving me this idea right now? Can you wait about an hour? Give it to me when I'm sitting in front of a computer or have a pen in my hand and some paper on a table and I can write down the idea that you're about to give me? But no, you give it to me anyway. And I spend the rest of my bike ride going, remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this, remember this. Most of the times I do. God, Muse. What would I do without you? Who would I be without you in my life? I don't know that person. I really don't. I know me with you. And the very idea of not having you in my head frightens the crap out of me. And yeah, sometimes I wonder what happens if you go silent. Will I start writing on chalkboards of all the things I lost? I missed my muse the most. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is you're here and I'm here. And we're doing this regardless. Regardless of which lens we're looking through, we're doing this. Anyway, I suppose I should get back to it. I've got a book to finish. So uh, you can so you can inspire me to write the next one. Thanks for being there. <laughs>